Hey guys! Alright, so today I want to talk a little bit about matrices. And I want to explain kind of, we're not going to do a matrix in this video, I'm going to have another one for that. But I want to explain why we do what we do in matrices and what's actually going on. Uh, once we get into matrices, I give a formula and I'm like this, you need to memorize and this is how we're going to use the process for matrices. And the more often you use that formula, the more you see what's going on behind just the formula. But as you're starting out and you're getting that formula, you're like, why am I doing this? I don't see the whole point of doing this. So I want to start with something and just go through the things that we're allowed to do with matrices and talk about what we can do, what we can't do, and how it actually works using equations, which is something we're a little bit more familiar with. So if we were to look at this right here, we have 9x plus 13y equals 2, and we have negative 3x minus 5y equals 2. So we have two equations and two variables, so that means we can get to an answer, um, because you need the same number of variables as you have equations. If you're using matrices, first thing we would do is rewrite in a matrix. So in a matrix, you have a column for x, a column for y, and a column for z. Uh, they tend to put a little bar where the equal sign goes to help you differentiate that. First row has a 9 for the x, 13 for the y, and a 2 for the z. The second row has a negative 3 for the x, a negative 5 for the y, and a 2 for the z. So matrices pretty much, they just get rid of the variables and they allow us to work with the numbers. Because of that, you've got to be very, very, very careful when you organize. And you'll watch my other videos. I actually, um, I'm going to do it on paper uh, because the organization is so vital that I want to make sure my students see how I would organize it on a paper because it's a little bit different than I would on a board. So uh, I'll try to get a couple of those up soon. Uh, so we have this matrix. So what I'm going to pretty much do is I'm going to do a step at a time and show you how it's the same with the equations as it is with the matrices. So the first thing we're allowed to do with the matrix is we're allowed to multiply any row by a non-zero constant. So what that means is I could take either one of these rows, row one or row two, and multiply by any number other than zero. Can I ever multiply it by zero because that would get rid of the whole thing? And what it is, is it's from the elimination method. For elimination with normal, system, with normal equations, your goal is to make one of the variables the same number but the opposite signs. So that when you add them, that variable is eliminated. That's our overall goal. So what we would do over here, if we were doing elimination, and we could say, well, the x's would go away very nicely if I multiplied the second one by 3. So if I came over here and I said multiply by 3, the first equation would stay the same. I always rewrite them in pairs. I always work in pairs. The second equation would become 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9x, 3 times negative 5y, which is negative 15y, and 3 times 2, which is 6. My brain died for a minute. It is 6. Right. And so that's what we would normally do as our first step to elimination. But I want you to show you what it does when we're in matrices as well. So for matrices, if we're going to take row 2, and I'm going to put that as a big R, a little 2, a sub 2, R sub 2. I'm going to say it becomes, with an arrow, 3 times row 2. Basically, I'm saying row 2 is going to become 3 times itself. Row 2 is going to become 3 times itself. This is just kind of how we write them in matrix form. All you could write, depending on how, how strict your teacher is on the equations, multiply by 3. Could be just a simpler way to look at it as you're getting into it before you start writing out all the equations and such. So if we took this, I never touch the first row, right? All I'm messing with is the second. So that first row, that 9, 13, and 2, those are staying the same. 
The second row, I'm going to do negative 3 times 3. Negative 5 times 3. And 2 times 3. And I want you to notice it's the same thing. So all we're doing is instead of doing it in equations, we're doing the same thing in matrices. Okay. Now normally we would use this step to create a one, uh, which will be explained in a different video. But the other thing we're allowed to do in matrices is a little bit different. It's a little bit weird. Students have a really hard time wrapping their mind around the wording. A lot of times when you look at your math book, they word things so complicated because it's written down in print. And once it's written down in print, it's official. And then all someone has to do is find one mistake in the entire book and they can say the whole book's wrong. It's not, but that's, you know, why they tend to put things a little bit more officially to cut out all any loopholes. So the second thing they say we can do is we can add a multiple of one row to another row. And that just, I don't know if it's the amount of words, if it's the type of words, if it's the words themselves, uh, that tends to really confuse students. So we're going to break it down into what it actually says. It says we're going to add. And then a multiple, multiple comes from the word multiply, right? So we're going to add a row that we multiplied to. So we already know we can multiply to a row. We did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to back up this matrix get rid of that step. I'm going to continue on in my elimination. We already know how to do elimination. By the time you get to matrices, you should have your elimination down really well. So we're going to continue on with this. Elimination says once you multiply, you should be able to add and one variable become eliminated. If it doesn't eliminate, it's not elimination. We eliminate that variable. 13 minus 15 is negative 2y. 2 plus 6 is 8. Okay, that's your next step in elimination. So I wanted to show you how to do that in matrices. And the reason I went ahead and erased this step and the joy of matrices is that we're going to do all that at once. So it's going to save you a little bit of time versus having to do uh, elimination or substitution or anything else. Imagine when you have three equations. You can save quite a bit of time by not having to do elimination in two steps every time to eliminate a variable. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the exact same things we did here. We're going to take row 2 times 3. Just like we did before, we wrote multiply row 3 times 3. And then what did we do? We added row 1 to row 2. So I multiplied row 2 by 3, and then I'm going to add row 1. But instead of doing it in two steps, I'm going to do it all in one. We want to work more efficiently, work smarter, not harder. So we're going to take this matrix, and we are going to work on row two. So I'm going to leave row one completely alone, which seems kind of weird. We're going to leave row one completely alone, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. We're working on row two. So for every piece, every column in row two, I want to take that number, multiply it by three, and add whatever's in row one. So I'm going to look at this column by column by column. Column one. Here. I have three times negative three plus row one, so plus nine. Three times negative three is, neg is negative nine. So negative nine plus nine. Column 1, 3 times negative 3 plus 9. That becomes 0. Column 2, I'm going to take 3 times row 2. Row 2 in column 2 is negative 5. Row 2, column 2, plus row 1. Row 1 in column 2. That's 13. 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15. 
plus 13 is 2. Okay? Column 3. I'm going to do 3 times row 2. So row 2, column 3, is a 2. Plus row 1. Row 1, column 3, is a 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And what I want you to notice is that those are the same. We have zero x's. Did I mess up my math here? Negative 15. Yep. Very careful with your arithmetic. Negative 2y's and 8 as my equals. So it's all the same thing as we're doing with equations. But now, by putting it in with matrices, we're allowing a more efficient process. And efficiency is what we want the most. So it allows you to do things efficiently. You're allowed to multiply any row by a non-zero constant. And you're allowed to add a multiple of one row to another row. So that would be how you would do that step. Those are the two major steps, at least the ones that I focus on, to create your ones and your zeros for matrices. So uh, I'll try to get in a couple more videos sometime this summer on uh, 2x3 and 3x4 actually solving the entire matrix out.